are talking to Roberto Marchesi, who is the art director for Hitman Absolution. And um, I'll just start off with a couple of questions and I'll throw it to you guys as well as the guys online. If you have anything you want to ask him, you know, get it ready. So my first question um, is to do with the Glacier 2 engine. Um, this is obviously a new technology and you talked about it before. Uh, it can render like 1,200 NPCs and still have the game running at a solid 30 frames per second. What sort of challenges did you face when you were starting to work with this new engine? Well, the new engine has uh, been made in-house and it was made for Absolution and Absolution has shaped how uh, Glacier 2 is working. So the, the, the two technologies really went uh, in tandem in their development. So the biggest challenge has been pure and simple as producing the engine and figuring out exactly what the development team needed for, it, for its game. Mm -hmm. The engine has, can actually, we had a, a very, very luxury problem. We could ask the tech teams to produce what we needed and they were more than willing to oblige. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's a really a question of uh, being mindful of what you wish for because you might get more than you actually bargain for. But uh, the engine has been performing extremely well. It's the guys are really getting the hangs of it and learning how to use it. And uh, we are really looking forward to use it for the next games. Awesome. Well, my next question uh, is something that, that kind of caused a bit of uh, controversy, I suppose, in the media. And this was, uh, as some of you might have seen, um, the, the Hitman trailer. Uh, depicting uh, some nuns and um, you know it did spark a bit of controversy did the reaction from the like from the media and the public surprise you uh, to a certain degree yes but I mean the first thing that I think is really important to point out in this when doing the trailer we were not trying to offend anyone that was really not the intention and uh, but uh, we showed the trailer because we were showing levels from the game the, the trailer is uh, showcasing a level that you will be playing as Agent 47 during the Absolution campaign and the enemies are one of the more outrageous of the type that you will meet during, that, uh, during the game. Mm -hmm. uh, what I think is what is interesting about uh, the, 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 the Hitman universe is that you can have a large palette of different situations that the players get put in all the time and uh, this was definitely one of the more extreme ones but we did it just because it was there mm -hmm. in the game. Okay. Well, um, my next question is, uh, if you could redesign Agent 47's image and give him a complete overhaul, what would you make it? Well, yeah, I, think, I think that is actually uh, a bit of a redundant question because I personally believe that his looks uh, uh, are really cool. He's an iconic character, the red tie, the, the silver ballers, the, the, all this the suit, all, ma all make part of, uh, of a trademark. And it's really, we don't have much to tamper with. There's, there's much to gain. But on the, on the other side, he does give us a huge freedom every time he takes on a disguise. And that's actually uh, what we really focus on developing the game because we can give him many more expressions and give him different uh, character outfits every time. And, 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 uh, and uh, the details we can add to him and uh, quirkiness really come out in the extra disguises. You don't feel the need to maybe give him a bit of hair sometimes or change uh, his tattoo even? Uh, well, the, the hair, hair, hair is DNA traces. Why would he have leaving DNA all over the place <laughs> when he's going around? Oh, no. That's true, that's true. Um, so did you guys have any particular questions that you wanted to throw out to us? Don't be shy. <laughs> yep, sure. So with, with the contracts, um, when you finish a contract someone else has made, you get in-game money that you can use to then purchase. Yes. No, there, there's, uh, fundamentally there's nothing in place. Contracts uh, work on, on different levels. One is just purely exploring the game from a different angle, like we showed in the library, where you have but first... As much as that sucks the fun out of the game, I was just wondering whether you put anything in place to well, assess the difficulty of the contracts people are making. But the, the premise of contracts is, is uh, proving that you're the best assassins in the world. If you make a really easy contract, you're not going to get much respect among professional assassins. And we know for a fact that the people that have been playing Blood Money up to this date, creating their own custom uh, challenges, they're not going for the easy stuff. They want to have a challenge. They want to have the bragging rights to prove that they are the best assassin in the world. We do have a competing aspect with leaderboards from your friends, national and worldwide. And we're pretty convinced that th what the players will come up with will be m much more advanced than we could, any uh, plans we could come up with. But there will be a competi competing edge in there, and I'm pretty sure that that will take care of itself. Okay, I think we had a question up the front here. Did someone? 
Yep. In your other titles, you had you, you didn't have instinct. You just told me you brought instinct into it. Is it just so that new players can adapt to this? Like, why have you brought in instinct this time when you have the other titles? Well, we brought in instinct because we really want to make the game more accessible. And by accessible, again, I don't mean easy. Uh, we just wanted to communicate better to the players their options and give them uh, a better understanding of what the game was about to be doing. Uh, the, the, instinct, the, the basic premise of instinct is that it shows you placement of enemy uh, patrols and objects that, are, that are, can be of, uh, of use for you. And that is doing the exact same thing as, as the old raider uh, that you had in Blood Money. You just had to exit the game every time, access this magic eye that told you the placement of every person on the screen, and you got this information. Here, this, the, the, the information retrieval is much more streamlined. You don't get yanked out of 47's body every time you need this. You're still there, you're, still, you're not leaving the game, and it happens real time. At the same time, you also have made the game much more complex than Blood Money. You can do many more things, you have many more tools at your disposal. So we need to communicate as much as possible, as clear as possible to players their options, because we really want uh, their creativity to take over. And uh, when, they're, when they come in situations where they are not used, uh, they didn't expect, they want them to adapt and come up with a, a, a solution on the fly. OK, uh, well, I think maybe we'll, uh, yeah, yes, go ahead. <laughs> were there any levels or features in the game that were born out of level designers trying to push the engine to its limits? Yes, there were. <laughs> <laughs> there were I mean, the, we, we, it was a really bit of a test, uh, test bench for every one of us. We were trying to learn what we could do, in, uh, both graphically and, uh, and uh, gameplay-wise. But uh, um, some, of the, some of the more uh, advanced crowd levels are definitely some, a good example of that, because we were really trying to see how much we could merge uh, a technological feature like crowds and a gameplay mechanic uh, like hiding in them. And they, and, and those, some of the bigger levels that have the biggest crowds are actually uh, kind of, uh, born from this uh, desire to test the limits of the engine. Have you um, crashed the game yet by putting too many people into it? Uh, it's uncrashable. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's possible, of course. It's uh, just a question of memory and uh, how much you have left in your uh, PC when you're doing it. It's, uh, uh, the, the, the level, we are running at uh, 1200 right now, 1300 on some levels if you really want to push it, but uh, in theory, the limit is just how much uh, the, the memory you have. Okay. I uh, might throw it over to Twitch to see if anyone on the stream has any questions. Sure. Um, Dark of Angel asks, will the newspaper from Blood Money be back? Will the newspaper from Blood Money be back? Uh, well, the newspaper feature we had in Blood Money was tied in with the notori notoriety system that uh, tracked your performance. Uh, this time around, it's a bit more of a um, compressed journey, so, so we didn't have that. But we do have them actually co making an interesting comeback, more as a, more as a, more as a fan service in the, in the textures of the, of the game. Okay. Uh, any more questions from the audience here? Um, going back to pushing <laughs> the limits of the engine. Yeah, sure. Um, how, much did, how many characters you had in the level, say, with your crowd system um, coming with the minimum What do you mean minimum requirements? Uh, like the, the limit of the current consoles, like the PS3 and the Xbox 360. Yes. Um, was that ever a problem? Like, uh, was there ever a time where you were like, I wish this crowd was twice as big? If we had more power, why not? In, in theory, yes, but it, I, don't, I don't see it really as a problem because we had this uh, console generation for some time. Yeah. And, and, uh, and yes, it is, it is uh, not the newest technology, but it actually allowed all these years we worked and it has allowed us to learn them uh, and we know how much we can squeeze them and actually it's a bit more interesting from, from a nerdish developing point of view to make the coolest game possible uh, with this generation. Yes, and, and, sh and see, see what we can do. Uh, then it's getting the newest, biggest, fastest toy around because, I mean, you were just going to crash it. <laughs> They're, they're going to be def uh, they're, they're yeah, they're men I cannot go too much in details, but the sniper challenge that you have as a pre-order incentive is unique in the way that it was developed uh, internally for uh, um, testing the sniper rifle. 
and uh, we were building it on uh, gray boxes and just having fun shooting at the same poor NPCs over and over again. <laughs> and we realized it was kind of fun uh, and we felt like it would make actually a good pre-order incentive as a, to give to the, to, to the people that have been waiting for the new game for a long time, so we ended up actually making it more than it was. Uh, the difference is that you are locked in position when you're playing the sniper challenge and on the contrary on the in when you're playing the game you are mobile so that exact type of gameplay would not really work well for for uh, for uh, absolution but uh, we are looking in uh, with the, you have the sniper with you in the level and it gives you a, a distinct advantage especially when playing on some levels where the contract is vital but uh, exactly like the sniper challenge is not in so absolution okay. We are definitely looking into that. <laughs> Any more questions? How long did the game take from sort of pre-production to completion to state? Well, the game has been uh, in production for uh, some time. I'm not really able to tell you the exact length, but uh, uh, the, the, f the fact that there has been such a, such a gap between Blood Money and, uh, and uh, Absolution is also a reflection of the fact that we worked on Mini Ninja. We worked on the Kane and Lynch franchise. And we also were developing a new engine from the scratch. And uh, making a new engine is uh, more difficult than sending up men on the moon. <laughs> <laughs> yep, another question. Uh, with the Wii U coming out, is there any consideration at all of looking at that, uh, releasing him and Absolution on that at all at any point down the track? Or Sorry, can you say that? Um, with the Wii U coming out, is there any chance? Oh, for the Wii U? Uh, unfortunately not. We, d we don't have a Wii U version planned. Okay. Uh, any more questions from the stream or...? Yes. Uh, Jay Sparky asks, any plans for the DLC uh, to add new levels and contracts? So. Well, they were, we are going to be uh, pr delivering uh, contracts runningly. Some of them will be made by uh, IO employees and uh, some of them will be made by, uh, hopefully, uh, the, f the community. Okay. Any more questions from the audience? Yes. Uh, is, how, is Hitman Absolution <coughs> going to feature um, multiple endings, or is it based on his choices? No matter what happens, you have one ending. Well, uh, with Absolution, we wanted to go a bit deep. With uh, did I say go deep? Uh, <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, develop uh, the story of, of a bit of a personal side on, uh, on Agent Forty Seven and. Uh, this main story arc, the one that you see in the cutscenes, that's unchanged. You have one ending and that's the one we wanted to tell you. What you can affect are the minor stories inside the levels that you are playing and uh, especially if you are going on a more active uh, ram shooting rampage or if you are more sneaky, you will affect the reactions and some of them will negate each other. So you will not unlock all the content on a playthrough no matter how um, um, thorough you've been on playing it because what you've done has actually changed some of the stuff that you will see. So multiple playthroughs unlocks? D multiple playthroughs are definitely needed to unlock everything that is present in the game, but the story itself is, is dead and it's locked. Any more questions from the audience? Might take another one from uh, the live stream actually. Uh, there's a question on Facebook which asks, uh, mm -hmm. do the nuns remain in the story or does that section cut out? <laughs> No, I mean, we showed the nuns because uh, they were part of the game and they are still are part of the game. Okay. <laughs> yep, another question. Um, depending on your play style, does the world change? So if you're more, like, say, a more aggressive player or a more stealthy player, will that affect the way that things play out? As far Definitely. As I mean, uh, uh, in one of the earlier uh, code drops that we showed, there's a, for inst uh, that's a very good example about, the, uh, it's called the orphanage where uh, you are, there's an orphanage that has been under siege by these thugs that are looking for a girl. Uh, in the process, they've taken down a guard, and you are uh, in, uh, sneaking by them. You come up with a choice where you can actually stop the thugs beating this guard to death, but then you will actually be discovered, and you will affect your rating. By just having stopped this murder happening, you are not a silent assassin anymore. But then the, the, the guard will give you some information that you can use later on. On the other side, if you actually just walk by, they would kill the guard, but they would then uh, follow you down in the, in, in the, in the level, and uh, it would play out in a different, different way. 
but then you would be styling the assassin. <laughs> Maybe. Um, any more questions from either Twitch or on Facebook? Yes. Um, during the testing of levels, did your QA staff ever complete contracts in ways that you never expected them to? Yes. And uh, we're actually proud of them uh, <laughs> because uh, we really wanted to make a game that was uh, as flexible as possible. We know that by the nature of making an open uh, kill sandbox like we are doing, we can try to imagine as many ways as possible that a contract can be finished. But usually as soon as uh, QA or players get their hands on it, they will come up with new stuff. And that is really valuable for us. Q Q uh, <coughs> sorry, uh, playtesting. The game is, uh, is something that we use a lot to understand uh, what is working and what is not working and uh, to actually both have inspiration but also to understand our mistakes during the production of the game. Okay, uh, any more questions from the audience? Yep, down the back. Um, I'm just interested in, your, in uh, the development process. Is it is a lot, particularly on the art side, but on the technical side as well, is it mostly uh, an internal, are uh, your artists all internal? Do you have any, any work that you contract out in terms of art or audio or music? Or <coughs> Well, I think the bulk of the work is done in-house. Uh, some uh, some uh, percentage of, uh, of, of um, outsourcing is natural in, this, uh, in, in, in bigger production like this, but we have uh, the, both the graphic artist teams, the animators, and, uh, <coughs> sorry, and all the programmers, they are in-house and they are doing uh, the, the, the bulk of the work. We really want to keep uh, the key assets in-house and, uh, and, and, and the talent in there. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I might just wrap up with uh, one last question. Uh, if anyone wants to pitch in from the audience, no? All right, we'll take it from uh, online then. No, that's it? Okay, well, I've got a question on my own, actually, that I want to ask. Uh, when you're working on uh, these kind of games, yeah. I mean, obviously, you've got a whole setting. It's set in um, Chicago or wherever you choose to set it. Where do you draw inspiration from? I mean. Do you go to, to make it as accurate as possible as the real world, or you know, do you yeah. do you create your own kind of? Well, it's a mix and match. I mean, one of the things that I think uh, uh, attracts people to this franchise is that it's so outrageous and it takes them to places that they can only uh, wish for or they look with uh, with lust. Um, with Chicago, it was really easy. We, when we made this game, we wanted to keep the, the locations relatively confined, meaning like we had Chicago and then we have the town of Hope. So for us, it was really natural to just visit Chicago and use uh, some uh, a week there was five days, just taking pictures of the entire town, mapping it out, having an idea of exactly what it is that makes Chicago Chicago and not New York or San Francisco. But at the same time, we didn't want to recreate Chicago. We, this is our stylized version of it. This is how we interpret it when we do understand that the buildings are not placed in the correct uh, geographical uh, placement. It, it, but that doesn't matter because this is how we interpreted it. But we do want to take as much inspiration as possible from real life. And uh, both Chicago and Hope have had a lot of uh, research done actually in uh, what we could ask in, um, in, in local. Awesome. Okay. Well, thank you very much for answering all our questions. You're welcome. It's my pleasure. <laughs> thank you guys for um, you know, pitching in and being a part of it. I guess now uh, you have a chance to play the game, um, experience it for yourself. And uh, yeah, if you have any more questions, feel free to approach uh, either us and uh, let us know. <laughs> cool. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.